Hi, this is Rob Manson from Teufelberger's Life Safety Group. Today I'm here to go over rope inspection. Rope inspection is just as critical to your safety as clipping in is in the first place, but most people don't treat it that way or effectively know how to do it. So today I'm gonna to cover the basics on how to inspect your ropes. You should inspect your ropes before and after every single use. Before, for obvious reasons, because your life depends on that rope, and afterwards because you're familiar with what that rope just went through, what its experiences were, what hazards it faced, what chemicals it may have touched, what it came in, in contact with. All of that should be maintained in a rope log. Depending on what your industry is, what your requirements are, you may have different requirements for rope logs. I use an online app called Paper Trail. You can use whatever you want, whatever works best for you, but you should log all that stuff so that that history of that rope is always maintained, always known. If your rope sits in a rope cache or a rescue cache or on a truck, you should inspect that rope uh, at least twice a year. I try to do it before season and after season, whatever my busy season is. The reason you're doing that is because there's environmental factors that will come in contact with that rope, will impact that rope and its ability to perform, and may also uh, that rope may also come to its end of life before you're expecting it. So it's better to look at those things rather than immediately when you need them and find out you have issues. Good rope inspection has four main points. First is to validate that the specs and the certifications for that rope match the hardware and the job you're about to use it for. Second is to inspect the general condition of the entire length of that rope and validate that it's in good shape. Third is to inspect any fabricated terminations. And fourth is to record the inspection and any findings in your rope log. So let's start with specs and labeling. When you're looking for specs and labeling, the first thing obviously is whether the labels are on the rope and they're legible. These things will wear down, will break down, will come off, so you need to have that information in your rope log so that you can relabel the ropes or have the ropes attached in a bag, something like that, have the labels so you know what those are. Um, the second thing is to make sure that the rope is compliant with the hardware you're about to use. So if you're using a piece of hardware that requires an 11 mil kern mantle, you need to make sure you have an 11 mil kern mantle. You do that by reading the end band label. If you need a half inch rope, et cetera, et cetera, just make sure that the label is compliant with what you're about to use and meets the recommendations of that hardware manufacturer. They vary dramatically, so make sure that your hardware will work with the rope you're about to use every single time you use it. The second thing is to make sure the certifications that you're required to use for that rope are uh, met by that rope. So things like ANSI standards, uh, EN standards, CE, NFPA, depends on what you need for your industry, just make sure that that rope meets those standards. Uh, the other thing that you wanna check for is end of life. Make sure that rope still has useful life on it. Every manufacturer will have its own recommendations by rope. Um, on what the life expectancy of that rope is. You'll need to know that. You'll also need to check your rope log to make sure that rope hasn't met any hard conditions. So those, those are the first things you wanna check for on your rope inspection. Let's go through that in a little more close up. So now that you know what you're looking for, let's look at the labels themselves in some detail. Most life safety ropes will either have an NFPA label, a CE label, or both. Let's look at each one of those. We'll start with the NFPA label. The first things you wanna look for on this label are the certifications that the rope is, is certified to, the product identification number, the name of the rope itself, the manufacturing lot number, which happens to also be the date of manufacture. In this case, the first two are the year and the second two are the month. So 2020, May, and the 29 is the date that it was manufactured on. The next thing you wanna look for is the class of certification, the minimum breaking strength, the diameter to validate that it works with your hardware, the types of fibers that it's made out of, and the elongation on each of those. This information down here is the brand of rope, 
There are a lot of great brands out there, but there's only one great manufacturer. So that information should appear right here. And if your rope doesn't say Teufelberger Fiber Rope, you bought the wrong rope. Now let's look at the CE label. The CE label contains the same information, just in a slightly different format. Which certification it's certified to? In this case, it's EN 1891. A, the diameter of the rope, the name of the rope, the date of manufacture, in this case is 2020-05, which is also in that same lot number, and the serial number for that rope. And now you know more than you ever wanted to about how to read the labels and specifications for a rope. Next thing we're going to check is the general condition of the rope overall. This is what most people think of when they think about rope inspection. Most people will pull the rope through their hands, flake it out onto a tarp, and call it a day. That's not good enough. You're looking for small problems that will become big problems as you go. So what you actually should do is pull an arm's length of the rope, inspect it. Pull an arm's length of the rope, inspect it pull an arm's length of the rope and inspect it the entire way through that rope. Sounds like overkill, but really your life is on this line. So when you do pull that rope out, the things you wanna check for are knots, separations, anything like that. So you're looking for a knot while you're on the ground instead of finding it when you're above the ground. You're looking for duct tape, electrical tape, things like that will not hold your weight. You're also checking for any dirt or debris or things like that that can either impact your hardware that you're using or get into the core of that rope on Kern Mantle and Double Braids and uh, eat away at the core that you can't see that you have some damage. The other things you're looking for are small cuts, small cuts or tears, anything like that where you see that there is the potential to become a problem or uh, is a problem already. Um, things like that will start small and get larger unless you have a blatant cut and you see the core showing through. That's an immediate fail on both of those scenarios. The other thing to look for is extreme uh, fuzzing or heavy abrasion spots. If you see any wear spots, you need to get those inspected by a qualified uh, person to make sure that that's not deliberate damage to the rope. Um, the other thing you need to check for is the weave pattern itself. So when you pull that rope down, you can follow the pattern of the weave, not the color pattern, but the pattern of the actual woven yarns. You wanna make sure that that is straight through the rope, not twisted, not kinked, not causing any problems there because those are signs of possible damage to the sheath, the core, or shock loading of the rope itself. Uh, the other thing you can find doing that is when you feel that going through your hands and then when you visually inspect it, you're looking for glazing, any hard spots that are caused by hardware, contact with a uh, heat vent or a pipe, um, anything like that that will essentially melt the sheath of the rope, that's damaging your sheath, which puts your core at risk. So those things are certainly fail points. Uh, the other thing that you're going to look for, especially on a Kern mantle or a double braid where you have a sheath and a core, you can't see core damage through the sheath. So your only way to know if you have damage to that core would be to find things like divots, soft spots, bumps, or ribbing, where you'll see the core kind of bunching up, uh, I mean the sheath bunching up around the core. Those are definitely signs that you have an issue with the core yarns themselves that you can't see through the sheath. So you just have to find those eye by eye as you go through the rope. Um, the other thing that's an issue you'll see here in the weave pattern is kinking. If that rope wasn't uncoiled right the first time you used it, or you did a couple of really long rappels and didn't relax that rope afterwards, you will see a kinked rope. Um, that makes it a lot harder to work with when you're actually climbing or, or rappelling. The next thing you want to check is any sewn terminations. When you're checking the sewn terminations, the first thing you want to check is that the protective shrink tube around the sewn termination is in place and doing its job protecting those threads. 
The next thing you want to check is that all of the threads are consistent in place and that there are no broken threads. And the most important thing to check is to make sure that there is no separation between the two ropes that are sewn terminated. Similar to sewn terminations, you want to check splice terminations also to make sure that any of the splicing is in place and firm. There shouldn't be any loose ends, any separation, or any dangling pieces of the splice itself. The next thing you want to check for in your inspection is any permanently installed hardware that is now part of your rope system. This would include things like snap hooks, steel or plastic thimbles, O-rings, anything that is now permanently sewn or spliced into your rope as a defined termination. You want to check those for their overall condition looking for any cracks, sharp edges, high abrasion spots, worn spots, rusted spots, anything that could either impact the functionality of that piece of hardware or impact the rope such as a sharp edge that could cut the rope itself. You want to check those for functionality if they have moving parts like a snap hook would for example. You want to make sure that snap hook is functioning properly and then you want to check those pieces of hardware for any ratings. If it is, for example, a snap hook, it will have a rating on it. You need to make sure that that rating matches up with the task you're about to do with that rope, similar to when you checked the label at the beginning of your rope inspection. You also want to note any findings on the hardware inspection into your rope log because with that piece of hardware being permanently attached to that rope, it is part of the system and should be inspected as a whole. So that's a quick high level version of how you will inspect your rope. Remember, inspect your rope before and after every use, check the entire length of the rope, and always when in doubt, throw it out. Have a good one.